like to welcome you to St. Matthew's United Methodist Church in Bowie. Uh, we are glad you have joined us today, whether you are here in person or online, you're always welcome at St. Matthew's. Let us begin with our call to worship. Please stand if you are able. <laughs> This is the house of the Lord. People of God, hope in the Lord. Let the redeemed of the Lord rejoice. Our opening hymn is on, can be found on uh, 696. We are requesting prayers for uh, uh, oh, you're sorry, Con uh, Connie Hines. She is at Walter Reed Hospital. We are also uh, requesting prayers for our current COVID crew. There are several, so we're not going to name them, but please keep them in your prayers. And today uh, we have several joys. 
what a beautiful day to have joy, so, several joys. Roy Hakes is doing so well, he hiked eight miles on the Appalachian Trail. Oh, really, God is good. Also, we have some birthday wishes today. Loring Dakes is celebrating his 90th birthday today. And Carl and Margie Pacella celebrated their 61st wedding anniversary this week. And today is Carl's 85th birthday. Happy birthday. And those two young men I didn't see at ASP. Maybe next year. <laughs> we also have one more joy. Um, Kai ha uh, Hooper. She defended her dissertation last week on June 20th. She was successful, so she is now a doctor in educational leadership. Yay! Her daughter, Sarai, is very proud of her, and she cannot wait to see uh, what she does next. So congratulations, Dr. Kai Hooper. Very nice. Thank you. Let's bow our heads in prayer. God, we would not forget times to be silent and to listen to what you have to say to us. When we gather for worship, your word is present in so many different ways. Through our call to worship, through our opening hymn, the scriptures, your holy word, and in that special time when we can share our joys as a church family and we can share our concerns, and we can lift each other up in prayer. You are a mighty God, and you are a God who listens. And we pray that our lives not be so noisy, that you're blooded out. And if they are a little bit noisy, that you'll break through and say, it is I, I'm calling you. I want you to walk as a disciple in the footsteps of my son, Jesus Christ. I want you to be a disciple. I want you to reach out to those who have not heard the good news, who have not received you in their hearts. And I don't want time to pass on doing this. I want you to begin now. So we thank you, oh God, that you're with us individually. You're with us as a church. You're with us as a nation. Even on this weekend when we celebrate by observing Independence Day. Deliver us from all evil, oh God. And keep us on the path that leads to eternal life, made possible by Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray. Amen. 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 Will you stand for the hymn before the scripture?
Number 598, A Word of God in Clark. Today's epistle reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 1 through 6. My brothers and sisters, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work, then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel affirmation and remain standing for the reading of the gospel.
There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. Sweet. Today's Gospel reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11, and 16 through 20. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter first, say peace to this house. And if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God, has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Indeed, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Good morning. Happy Fourth of July. So tomorrow we're going to celebrate our country. Do you know why we, why we celebrate Independence Day? We, de we declared ourselves a separate nation on that day. People celebrate in several ways. What are some of the ways you celebrate or your family celebrates? A cookout and maybe fireworks. You have picnics with family and friends and barbecues and some places have parades and special songs and of course then we end it with big fireworks. You know, it's fine to have pride in your country. And being a citizen is a privilege and responsibility. Sometimes people become citizens by being born here. Or other times they take special tests and classes to become citizens. Either way, being a citizen means that you have rights and can live and work in the community. It's a wonderful thing. Did you know that we have a kind of so another kind of citizenship too. The Bible talks about being citizens of heaven. And that means that our lives on earth are only temporary. We belong to God's family and have a home ready in his country someday. What does that mean? It means we don't live in heaven yet. <clears throat> but we have rights of being citizens <clears throat> and children of God, and we'll go there someday. You know what else? God has given us, <clears throat> excuse me, a special job to tell other people about heaven. <clears throat> excuse me. We get excited about our national pride, but we should also get excited about God and spread his word to others. In the gospel, Jesus sent out disciples to share the news of his kingdom with others. And he warned them that some people not, might not receive him well, but that they should be eager to give the message. And that's still our job today. If we're thankful for our heavenly citizenship, we should demonstrate that by sharing our joy of God with others and our knowledge of the gospel with others. And we can do this by showing them love, right? And through telling them excitedly, about Jesus and his works for us. We want to invite others to join the heavenly citizenship. And the great news is, is that we don't have any tests or paperwork for it. We can just spread the news and show them what it's like to be one of God's children by demonstrating how to behave, right? How to be kind and loving to others. All right, let us pray. Dear God, Dear God. thank you for making us part of your family. Thank you for our citizenship in heaven. Help us understand how special that is. Please give us courage to share the good news of Jesus with all those around us. Thank you for your love. We love you, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Hey, okay, thank you. The harvest is plentiful, 
but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Come summer along roads out in the country, there's often a pleasant surprise if you look out the window. For God is seen in glorious splendor, a field of wheat growing, ready to be harvested. The question that immediately arises, who will do the harvesting? Growing up in rural part of Pennsylvania and north central part of the state, growing up on a farm, I knew what it was like to build a stock of wheat. In fact, it was my grandfather who taught me how to do this. And I thought, well, how does it stand if the wind blows in a certain way? And then I was told that you put one in the middle and then you build around and round and round until you get to shock. And then you would, after a while, see them so many feet apart all over the field. And they were there because it was time to get dry. That was the next step. And then there would come the day that was called thrashing day. It was time to bring the wheat into the barn. It was a common practice for farmers to help each other. On harvest day, some laborers would be out in the fields and others would be in the barn. They would do the threshing, separating the grain from the straw and making sure that the wheat was placed in the granary, ready to be fed to the, fed to the cattle. But the laborers were not just in the barn, they were laborers in the kitchen women preparing a bountiful meal, enjoying each other's company, ready to move from one farmhouse to another with their husbands, or each would have a day of harvest, a thrashing day. There's a hymn that expresses so well one's thankfulness to God, the hymn bringing in the sheaves, Bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing. Bringing in the sheaves. And when it was time for a break, farmers and their wives gathered around the table, the kitchen table, and the more chairs had to be put around. Not everybody had exactly the same space. And then there would be spoken a prayer, which as a child I thought would never end. <laughs> went on and on and on. So thankful that the seasons had come from the time of planting to the time of harvest. And there's so much fellowship and blessings to God. And then it would continue from one farm to another and then there would be the blessing on Sunday morning when these farmers and their wives would gather at the church. And I thought of another hymn, O oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain. The word amber means gold. And when we sing of it, it points to the glory of God. In Luke's Gospel, the 10th chapter, it can be found a harvest story. Luke's the only Gospel writer to include it. For me, something is missing when I read it. How can 72 people be asked by Jesus to come together to receive instructions? What they were about to do reached God's people. The time was ripe for winning souls 
and Jesus could not do it alone. Helpers were needed. And so apparently as he visited home to home, he asked, will you come and help me? And he got enough till he got to the 72 and he said, that's enough. I'll just stop right there. I'm not going to 73 or 74. 72 will give me enough workers. And now here's my vision of where Jesus met to give instructions. There were no handouts like we'd have today. Nothing projected on a screen on a blackboard. And my vision is they met not on along a street or on a well-worn path, but in a quiet place. And I see Jesus sitting on a on a hillside, or the, standing at the top of a hillside where all the ones are gathered. And I think of it as the time of the day. Jesus began by saying that the harvest was plentiful. And I think of this as happening in an evening. They had finished their daily task. And you think of it as 72 persons. Do we have 72 here today in this sanctuary? Just think of the hillside covered. Men and women, ready to hear what Jesus was going to say next. And he looked around and said, I need laborers. The harvest is plentiful. And I want you to help. I'm going to send you out in pairs of two. Do not take with you a bag or a purse. I thought, well, I've heard that over and over again. Where's my purse? I need mean, <laughs> Or even sandals. And I thought, sandals is often mentioned in the Bible. That was the shoe that you put on, sandals. And I thought, maybe they weren't going very far. The path was not going to be that rough. And then Jesus said, along the way, do not stop to say good morning or good evening, but to keep right on going. And when you enter a house, say peace and mean it for everyone in that household. Remain in the house if you feel welcomed, eating, drinking, whatever they provide. Stay in that house a while. You decide how long. However, don't dilly-dally. My list of souls is getting longer and longer. And went on the streets, cure the sick, and say that the kingdom of God has come. Should you not be welcomed out on the streets, say, you have not welcomed us as laborers in God's kingdom. So we're shaking off the dust that clings to our feet. So we weren't wearing any sandals so we could do this. Dust. And it's okay to have dirty feet. We're following the instructions which Jesus gave. Scripture doesn't tell us how long Jesus was there on the hillside meeting. But I like to think in the evening as it was getting dark, they looked out and saw a beautiful sunset. And then as it got a little darker, they looked up into the sky and saw all the stars that God had placed there. And they thought, look how bright the stars are tonight. And one voice spoke out, 
I see the stars, I see God's glory. Now we're ready to go. And Jesus said, count the stars. That's how many souls have to be saved. The harvest is plentiful, plentiful, overflowing. And somewhere in the, in the crowd shouted, we'll go, we'll be back soon. For there are souls to be saved. Yes, Lord, we'll come a-running. Let us pray. Oh God, this is a time of harvest. The season has come for us to reach out to our neighbors and even those that we don't even know. If we enter a household, just to greet everyone and share a blessing. For we do not know if that will be the beginning or not, but so often. It is a beginning for that person to come to know Jesus Christ as, as Lord and Savior. We can be that messenger of God. After all, you called us. The story is here in Luke's Gospel. Jesus had so much to do that he couldn't keep up with it all, and he needed laborers. And there have been laborers over the centuries as the church has grown and that has continued. And we know you need neighbors today also. May we follow in the footsteps of our Lord Jesus Christ. And if he says you won't need sandals, then we won't take any sandals along. God will provide. Amen. We now share our morning tithes and offerings. Righteous have come forward. Oh. 
Let us prepare now to come for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick and fed the hungry and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you have birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread gave it to his disciples and said, uh, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at his heavenly banquet. 
Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory of yours, Almighty God, now and forever. <laughs> Distribute the bread, and one of the assistants will help with the distributing of the cup. Breaks the bread, the Lord who pours the 
Allen now to give the some announcements that we have before we separate. Jane's comments at the end of the uh, communion service seemed especially appropriate for today's announcements. How shall we share the Lord this week? We have a number of announcements. First and foremost is I want to announce that uh, many of you already know that the uh, garden service has resumed at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. You're all welcome to attend. By the way, it's followed by the coffee hour, which also has resumed. We want to join you, join us after the garden service for the 10 a.m. coffee service. But in order for that to succeed, Hosts are needed to set up the coffee and to be ready prior to the garden service, which means you've got to come early to make that work. Please contact Ray Orkajan if you are interested in volunteering for more information and how you can support this effort. Secondly, this month's purchase of a Blooming Good Bouquet at Giant in Collington Plaza. Remember, there are several Giants in our area. This is the one at Collington Plaza. Any purchase of a bouquet at that particular giant will support the Little Food Pantry. And each purchase provides for a dollar donation to the Little Food Pantry. So if you have the occasion to go to store this week and you often shop at Giant, you might want to divert your attention to that particular one this week so that it'll support one of the key ministries of our community. The Angel Gang will be not be held this week on Tuesday, July 5th, but will resume on Tuesday, July 12th at 11 a.m. And Vacation Bible School will be held Sunday, July 17th from 1 to 4 p.m. The Huffman 
memorial service and celebration of her life will be on Tuesday, this Tuesday, at 1 p.m. That's the 5th of July. And next Sunday, the adult Sunday school begins again in room 220, I think it's 226, I hope I wrote that down correctly, uh, at 9 a.m. The next announcement is one that could have actually been under the joys and concerns, not just an announcement. For frankly, I'm extremely excited to be able to share this news with you. I'm pleased to share this morning that a significant mission announcement can be made for collaboration with eight local area churches. The Bowie Supportive Housing Corporation will welcome a newly arrived Afghan family of seven, a father, a mother, and five children, three boys and two girls, who arrived just last Friday, all under the age of 10. They'll be moving into Alpha House this coming Thursday, July the 7th at around 10 a.m. in the morning. We've been working with Lutheran Social Services for several months to get to the point of being able to make this announcement. We've assembled a team of more than a dozen skilled volunteers to assist in this work from the community. The St. Matthew's contact on our support team is Pat Layfield, who's standing right before you. Several other St. Matthew's members are included in our key support team. Dave and Jane Miller, for example, are also a part of the core team. One of the support people is Dan Blades, who's also here with us this morning. Now you can expect detailed information on how you can support this family and our ongoing work with other refugees in the area in both the Midweek Messenger and the Circuit Rider in the weeks ahead. The family will be with us at Alpha House for up to a year, starting on the 7th. Today's announcement seems especially appropriate considering July's International Prayer Focus Flyer, which is currently available in the Narflex. Your prayers for this newly arriving family are needed and welcome. We'll be working with this new family and members of the local area Afghan community to both assist them and educate us to implement this mission program, to welcome and support their transition into a new country, a new community, a new house, employment, schools, and the full participation in the American society that we celebrate tomorrow. Thank you very much. You please stand for our closing hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth.
harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Oh God, here we are, ready to go out. Bring us together again on another Sabbath that we can keep, keep preparing ourselves for what lies ahead. You have loved the world so much. You gave us your only Son, Jesus. Amen.